I chose to do my biology role model project on Dr. Jack Shawstock. Shawstock is an enthusiastic biologist that is extremely passionate in his work and his field. Shawstock did not grow up like a typical kid. His father was in the Royal Canadian Air Force, so this forced Shawstock to move around a lot between different cities and even countries. Whether it was Germany, Ottawa, or Montreal, these school systems encouraged students to work as fast as possible. This led him to be significantly younger than most other students in his class. Although socially challenging, Shawstock does credit a lot of his interests in school to do with being forced to be into what he was learning. His love of science truly came around when he was enrolled in Riverdale High School in Montreal. He talks about how he had a lot of great teachers such as Irene Brunn who sparked his love for biology. His father also built a chemistry lab in his basement where he would test chemicals that his mother would bring home from the company she worked at. Shostak also received his undergraduate degree at McGill University in Montreal at the age of 15. Then he went on to do his graduate studies at Cornell University where he received his PhD. Shostak, like the man of science he is, happens to have a science related hobby. Who would have thought? His latest interest took hold in rock outcrops a little south of Boston, which happened to contain several different rock fragments embedded in a smooth matrix. These rocks were found to be upwards of 630 million years old. One of the reasons I admire Shawstock is because of how hard he worked when he was younger and how much he truly loved science. As soon as I read about how he would do experiments in his basement because he was so curious about science itself, it reminded me a little of myself a little but at a much larger scale. When I was younger, I really loved just testing random things out just to see how they would react when paired with others. Another reason why I really admire him is because he's a Nobel Prize winner in physiology or medicine. This is a, another reason why I identify with him a lot is because my dream is also to be able to work in research related to medicine since it is constantly evolving. Dr. Shostak is a man of many talents and that even keeps him from being committed to just one field of study. He is currently involved in both biochemistry and genetics. Also, he is a professor at Harvard Medical School. The specific question that he's focused on at the moment is the biggest of them all, that being how life began. He believes that he can recreate in a lab the pathway that led to chemicals in space. Shostak hopes to understand more about the protocell and how it would grow, divide, and eventually evolve. Since Dr. Shostak is incapable of truly letting off the science gas pedal. He has already published a paper this year. This paper is about a model for the emergence of RNA from a prebiotically plausible mixture of ribosomal nucleotides. In the experiment, Shostak wants to prove that prebiotic synthesis of ribonucleotides was the reason for the emergence of the RNA world. The way that he did this was by mixing together several different ribonucleotides together and tested how that would affect an RNA template. Shostak also measured all the properties of the nucleotides when put in a non-enzymatic template directed by a primer extension for reactions. He ended up proposing that Arabino nucleotides actually are effective templates for RNA synthesis. His greatest findings come from his share in winning the Nobel Prize. The discovery was how chromosomes are protected by telomeres and the enzyme telomerase. Telomeres and telomerase specifically were placed into yeast cells. They found that the many chromosomes that were placed were protected by the telomeres and did not degrade. This showed that telomeres delay the aging of the cell, which is huge because it has been found to link into aging in humans as well. So the next step for this is to see if the aging process can somehow be slowed in humans due to having this knowledge. But aging is a very complex system and telomeres are just a part, but a big part to say the least.